Welcome to today's live. We are talking about the essentials, twin flame basics for manifesting your union. And today with us, before we jump into the topic, I would like to introduce, introduce, introduce. <laughs> our participants. <laughs> and with us today, Kanisha again, Certified Ascension Coach, Christine, Certified Ascension Coach, and Katie in training to become a Certified Ascension Coach. Paco and Deborah, we are also Certified Ascension Coach, and we are looking forward to talk with you on the Twin Flames Universe Open Forum about the topics, about the Twin Flame basics that are essential that you manifest your union. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say hello to our YouTube community too, and I would like to invite you to like and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any lives anymore. Yeah. yeah. For those of you joining us live, don't forget to drop your comments. This is the time to get the juice out of the lives. So yeah, don't be shy. Don't be shy. It's about the Twin Flame Union. So now you have the time to ask your questions and get it answered from the Certified Ascension Coaches here. Now is the time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and about the topic, the basics. When we were preparing for this life, we felt into our heart what would be very important for us to have. Like what would have been yes. the things that we would like to have known from the, the very get-go? Yeah. Like the very second after meeting, who we thought was our twin flame at that time. And of course, there's a lot of like terrain to cover. And we are gonna touch upon like the very basics but you're more than welcome to keep exploring the teachings, keep exploring what we have here. There's plenty of information to get you started on the right foot. So yeah, like the first thing that I at least like was pondering was like, I, I would have loved it to understand that the twin flame journey was just based on the law of attraction, like right there, like that I was just manifesting this other aspect of me that this was not like a random person who was outside and had absolutely nothing to do with me and I have to kind of control and manipulate into being in a relationship. Uh, it was actually way more easy <laughs> than that. You know now. Yeah, but it took me a while. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person who values her time very deeply. So the faster I can go through things <laughs> and get like really clear, really fast the, the better but of course like i'm not gonna judge my experiences it all led me perfectly to you sweet man exactly so yeah that was kind of like the, the the first big piece for me was understanding that this was just like uh, manifesting my twin flame was about manifesting everything that i am and this is something that is explained in Chefeshelia's book, Twin Flames, One Being Your Ultimate Lover. Ah, there we go. Which, like, I loved it because it was explaining step by step, like, what the journey was really about and what am I getting myself into and what does it mean? Because I was, like, at the beginning, I have to confess, I was, like, really obsessed about this person. I was like, oh, they are the love of my life. And I was kind of, like, chasing after them. And that was getting me nowhere. And, like, by the time I, I read the book, like it became very clear as like oh i have to do something on my like with myself first this is not just kind of like running after someone like i'm a rat in a little wheel so that was very important <laughs> that was a very key lesson and yeah it, it's based on you manifesting on the it, like, I love it because it explains very easily how your twin flame journey is actually a mirror of your inner experiences, how you are feeling about yourself, how you're feeling about your life and the people in it and the relationships you have. So basically, the, the better you can feel with all these aspects within yourself, the easier it will be to attract your twin flame in truth. It's not about like chasing them and getting them to say, oh, I love you. It's actually falling in love with yourself and your whole life first. And the second I started doing this, everything shifted. And it actually became very easy to manifest you. 
that's my favorite story, but people can catch it up in every life we've been, just like I've been repeating it all over again. But yeah, I don't know, yeah. guys, like how it's been for you too. Yeah, I, I love that you touched on that because I think that was a really big conflict for me coming in to the community was not realizing that it was all law of attraction, law of assumption, self-concept, all of those things tied in to really manifesting your twin flame because they're always going to reflect you, your beliefs about you and your beliefs about them. And so when I started, I was in a really deep place of separation because I thought I had to just do law of attraction or just do law of assumption or just focus on self-concept, not realizing that it was all one thing. And as you focus on you ultimately in your relationship with God, that is what is attracting your twin flame. And even being a certified ascension coach, I still have moments where I go back and revert into that old pattern and recognize like, oh, this doesn't feel good. This is a contrast. I can make a new choice again. But I think that people think that it's just kind of like a one-time thing. Like you heal something one time and then you come into union, not realizing that it is like a layer of healing deep core patterns and beliefs and systems that you had been working on for a very long time and I think for me one of the things that I have to go back to a lot is again the basics of the book the book is one reference that I go back to on a daily basis I check in and do flips in the book all the time but also recognizing that the work that Jeff and Shalia have created touches on all of those things it really does go through each and every one. I think Romance Attraction Course really talks about uh, law of assumption and just really assuming your wish fulfilled. The dreams coming to us really kind of focus on law of attraction with attracting your twin flame and your perfect life together as one. And um, again, it all just touches on just like your self-concept and your thought process about you, the programming that you can't see. And so when that came clear to me, it really did help me see that my twin flame was not only pointing to me about my relationship about love, but in general about my relationship about everything, all of my connections, all of my relationship with my finances, my family, my, my um, relationship with God the most, of course, but it just really was something that when I came into the community, I just saw it all as separate and they really helped bring it together that no, it's one. And that's the truth is everything is connected. Everything is one. And so that was really relieving to me. And uh, it is, you don't have to choose or pick, but you can go with what feels the most comfortable for you. Because there are people who come into the community who are like, well, I only study law of attraction. Well, you're able to <laughs> attract your twin flame that way. Or I only study a law of assumption. Then you're fine. Like either way, it's all going to come together if you're choosing to focus on your inner work and really looking at the places that are out of alignment with love. Yeah, I totally agree. And I was just kind of thinking that like, um, you can always like play with it and like have fun with it. And uh, sometimes I will test like the law of assumption and the law of attraction and um, see how my twin flame reacts because it is really quite like um, mystical and uh, magical to like see like how uh, the energy like reacts. And um, I think that like, that's like what really got me into believing like um what Jeff and Shalia were teaching was actually like stepping into it myself and trying it out and I do remember like many classes where uh Jeff and Shalia they say um do the work for yourself like try it out see what happens like you will see and every time that like you know you put the love into yourself and you know you practice that law of attraction um you will get the results from your twin flame. And that's like something that like is guaranteed. Um, I mean, there was obviously sometimes blocks to work through, but um, yeah, like when I came into um, this community, uh, I was very confused on uh, what twin flames were at the core. And uh, yeah, like law of assumption really makes sense to me, so. I agree with that piece. I love how we have uh, started with this because that's a very fundamental part of the twin flame journey that um, people who are first starting out don't get. And I didn't get it either because we are kind of 
taught this relationship model where you have to like taste the love and uh, you know go after your twin flame and it doesn't really work like that because yeah you could get a result like that with a soulmate but it's very important to remember that your twin flame is different it's not like a soulmate it's something completely different so if you want something that is not a soulmate relationship of course you need to do something that um, does not lead there so you need to change your approach and yeah it's been a huge like game changer knowing that it all comes from within on the twin flame journey and i've noticed that's how it flows easily like i can't convince my twin flame to love me and like nobody has to do that it's not gonna work but what i can do is fall in love with myself give myself all that i desire and build my dream life and then my twin flame is like effortlessly attracted to me and um yeah like when you fall in love with yourself then you won't be able to keep your twin flame away <laughs> like trust me on that they'll be magnetized absolutely 100 agree it's like but i love that that how christine was putting into words is like about falling in love with yourself now we're kind of like circling back to what we were saying at the very beginning when we started kind of like cracking up the topic of today's life and it may be daunting or, or challenging for some people i know it's been for me to suddenly make that switch between oh it's not about what somebody else wants or what somebody else believes or feels or, or desires it's about what i want and i feel like this is something that is not very much spoken out there I feel like I found like this is the first place that I found in quite some time that I was saying, you know what, you just need to focus on yourself. And I was like, what? I, I've been spending almost 40 years of my life feeling like I have to just focus on somebody else and please everybody else. And maybe put my desires a little like hiding under the corner, put them a little bit on, on standby and that doesn't work actually when you do that it's when your twin flame is like not writing to you not communicating not giving you the light of day and then, I don't, they, don't, they, they don't talk to me why okay well. i love that you say that because exactly what i'm dealing through with clients too and mm -hmm. when they receive kind of this boundary with this pattern putting the focus outside of yourself and we really focus on your inner and on your inner healing, what brings us to a basic on your twin flame journey that will manifest your twin flame. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you are blocked now or if you don't know yet exactly who your twin flame is. Mm -hmm. With focusing on yourself, like Deborah said now, on what feels good to you, or if you don't know what feels good to you now, then what feels explore. Go out explore. There, explore. And when you focus on that and bring their healing, mm -hmm. you will manifest your twin flame union. Not because you chase them, but like we said first, because you attract them. Isn't yeah, that I the juiciest thing on, on li in life? Yeah, I think it's uh, actually like one of the, the twin flame ascension school classes titles. It's, it's chase, it is attracting, not chasing. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. Meantime, I'm going to just take a little pause here. I'm going to say hi, everyone watching. Hi, Steph. Hi, Nadia, Michaela, Raquel, and everyone who's watching. Glad to have you with us. Yes. Don't forget to pop your questions. And I find that that's like the most exquisite aspect of the journey. In And I, I love it because it, it actually leads us like right to the, the second basic that for me was very important is understanding that there's healing to do and embracing all of who you are and everything that feels good to you. It's again, it's an exploration. You may not know exactly what you like. You may have thought that you like something. Maybe you were not really liking it all that much. And like, working through that those blocks or those upsets like we call it in the community like Paco and I are in union and we still have like upsets with each other or blocks to work through that doesn't mean that you cannot be with your twin flame in, and manifest your union actually couples in harmonious union which is like the step after coming into physical union they also work through stuff it's not like 
oh, you have to be perfect and have everything healed and be an ascended master so that you can be with your twin flame. It's a nice process that you get to enjoy with them. As you keep discovering, who, like, what gets your like, motor riding? And what floats your boat? And but like, that's okay. Yeah. I wanted to touch mm -hmm. on a piece of um, just this community um, and like what a blessing it is and something that I have noticed um, in the form, uh, the Facebook form, is that um, some people are working through upsets and blocks of um, embracing a community on this journey mm -hmm. and I just wanted to like really stress that like it's okay to like lean on others in this journey. Um, you know, uh, there is a saying in this community that um, it takes like a, like, or what's this? There's a saying like in life, like when like- uh, It takes um, a village to raise a, a it's child. It takes a village to raise a it, child. It takes a, a yeah. village to like achieve a, a harmonious union. Yeah, exactly. And like the one thing that I, um, had a lot of resistance to was, um, you know, uh, putting my resources in this community and like, you know, like going all in and, but when the going really went rough and I was working through some really big blocks, um, it was my Ascension buddies. It was my Ascension coach. It was this community. It was posting my really big upsets and like, um, having an open mind on what people had to say. And, uh, you know, an upset that, um, and a comment that I see a lot on this forum is, oh, well, like, I shouldn't have to have someone else, like, help me heal, or um, I can do this on my own, and I don't need to pay, and like, um, you know, and like, when I feel into that energy of that upset, it's just like, not really believing that you're worthy of, like, that help, and um, I, I feel like I've healed a lot on this journey, and the most healing that I've done in the last three and a half years has been through this community and opening up myself to these resources, whether that be something that's paid or just like, you know, watching a live or um, watching the YouTubes and um, opening myself up to a friendship in this community. And I just really felt that that was really important to express. Yeah, I found that with working with an Ascension coach, it actually prepared me to be able to partner with my twin flame because uh, shout out to my Ascension coaches, Carmel and Chrissy, they are very like direct. And that's exactly what your twin flame does is like they're like blunt and direct with an upset a lot of the times. And so I would start to recognize like, oh, I'm, we're in an upset. Like I do this with my coach all the time. Like they've prepared me for this. And so it really prepared me for going into my union with my twin flame and being able to work through the process instead of going into like defense mode or thinking that they're just trying to be against you and they're your enemy. Like this is so important to be able to be open to receiving that help. And that's really a huge block for a lot of people that don't even realize that it's a block for them is that they have a hard time receiving. And they're like, I don't know why my twin flame is not coming in. It's like, well, you can't receive them because you're saying no to love and to help and support, which is what they are. They are your love, help, and support in helping you ascend to God. So if you're having a hard time just receiving the community and coaches and people who are here to help you move through that process, you're going to have a very hard time receiving your twin flame. And they see it as separate, which I completely understand, but that's the whole point of this work is to heal separation consciousness and really realizing that everyone who comes into your life is ultimately here to help you come into your union with your twin flame. Yeah, even if it's like family, like sometimes they will bring up upsets for you to heal. And that is ultimately helping you come closer to your twin flame. And so when you really start to see the support and the resources that God has given you, you have the choice to receive it or to not. But I would, like Katie said, highly recommend that you do those things and really take in the, the thought process that those who do have their harmonious union ironically keep saying the same thing <laughs> like they keep saying work with an ascension coach and get into the work and a lot of the upset that seems to come up for a good amount of people is the finances and that I completely understand but when you do recognize that you're connected to source and God 
when you have that desire, a way would be made. Just like when you have the desire for your twin flame, the, there's a, a way made for you to be able to have that and attract that. So it is really having to choose and choosing to move forward in the direction of your union. And God's always going to provide a way for you to be able to have that. It's just trusting and having faith and taking that, that leap of faith there. Amen. Amen. And I would like to add that, um, you know, if people who are in harmonious union say that this got them to harmonious union and you won't harmonious union, might be a good idea to listen to them <laughs> because, you know, they might know something <laughs> about getting there. It's exactly what I thought last week too. I, at the beginning of my journey, all of us were listening to the unions who came into Harmonious Twin Flame Union, of course, Jeff and Shalia. And then all the students, they achieved Harmonious Twin Flame Union too because of their teaching. Yeah, and yeah, keep going. Exactly what I just did, it was kind of, I love that you all shared that right now because that was for me basic. I listened to the people who have what I desire. Mm -hmm. And I realized, okay, they all supported it. They got supported. And I was not good in receiving support. I was this lonely wolf who did everything alone. But when I came into this community, I felt not really good. So I realized, hmm, maybe I can receive support and I don't need to do it alone because I'm a human being. I'm designed to be in a community it feels good to be in a community and it felt so new for me being in this community because the people were so understanding and they were talking about the things I desire, twin flame, God, love, compassion, inner healing. That was just, I had needed to give myself time and space like Kate was saying, yeah, at the beginning it was new, I, I worked through it, I tried the mirror exercise, I felt better. It actually worked. Yeah. Already. Mm, sitting here now with me. <laughs> right. Yeah, but no, but I got the same feeling like when I tried it. The mirror exercise, I, I learned it the first time through the book. It has a full chapter dedicated to it. And when I tried the first time, I was like, wow, like this this really does something. I'm gonna keep like doing yeah. it and see what happens. I remember this moment very well too. It was so mind opening. So wow. It's just the inner thing I do, and I feel so good. Mm -hmm. Years of therapy were not able to help me feel like that. No, I agree with Katie. Like, what well, three years in? I've, I'm almost six years with the community now, but after three years in, when upon arriving to this space, I was like, I was hearing sort of things that I could not wrap my head around for decades, and I was very observant of this stuff. And I agree with everyone, and, and this is like why one of our basic for manifesting union is that you cannot do it alone. And the truth is, Jeff and Shalia didn't do it alone either. They had a spiritual teacher with them, helping them come into union, harmonious union as, as well. Like, it, it's not like it, it dropped out of the sky and they were suddenly met online and, oh, we are already in harmonious union. Like, they actually had to receive help too, because it is very challenging to be with your green flame. We have to go back to basics. Your twin flame is your perfect mirror. It's the perfect mirror of the content of your mind. Whatever you are believing about yourself, that you are not worthy, that you are not lovable, and all of that crap, like Spanish was saying, these thoughts of separation that we come here to heal, these are going to be shown by your twin flame. Your twin flame is not communicating with you. I'm not communicating with myself. I'm not paying attention to what I would like to be doing or what feels good to me in my life. And this is going to be shown. Your twin flame is, 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 doesn't even like do it consciously. It's natural to them. This is their purpose in your life. Like Katie and Christine were sharing and Kanisha were like opening to receive support. If you close that up and while everyone was sharing their peace, I understand that for many of us, when we first come to this community, we are met with unconditional love maybe for the first time maybe not even our biological family was able to give us that or they were to to some extent but it was for us 
not enough, so to speak. And it can be very triggering. Uh, I remember I had to greet, like I, I was greeting Chief Angelia with their own tools over two years until I recognized them for who they were to me as my gurus in this journey. And like, it's okay to have these upsets. It's okay to feel like you don't know if you can trust these people because you got burning your relationships for like so many times. Like, why would this be an exception, right? But it is an exception if you allow it to be. If you just, again, the book. The book is, is less than 20 US dollars in Amazon. It's very easy. It's very accessible. You have all, like, all the basics are here. You have the mirror exercise and you can practice it. And if you struggle with it because you don't know how to connect to your emotions, because this is new. Like it was new to me too. I required quite some practice before I could kind of like tap into that space of feeling rather than thinking then by God, we have an introductory course that is free. We have eight lessons. You, um, I, I cannot think about the word in English. You receive like discounts and among those discounts, there's a half off for the first introductory session with any of us coaches. By God, book an introductory session with any one of us and let us help you work through the four steps of the mirror exercise and you will know what the difference is. And with this, you will come to realize what this community is truly about, what the coaches are here all about, what Chef and Shalia are here all about. This is not about any of us abusing anyone. And I don't say this lightly <laughs> because this is exactly what I've been hearing for the past month or so. It's like releasing abuse in my relationships and actually coming to this deep understanding that not even my twin flame wants to hurt me. That all they want just for me is to release what doesn't serve me, what is holding me back from feeling like wonderful about my life. So it's okay, take your time. If you're new, you just heard of us a week ago or so, that's okay. Just Dip it though in the pool and see if the water is cool. Nobody's rushing, but do give the teachings a try. I would like to add uh, that it's very important to receive support also because like the ego can be very sneaky. And like, if you don't have anybody to help you with that and help you like understand how twin flames work and what's going on and like have a second pair of eyes, essentially, it can be very easy to get stuck in a loop. Like, let's say your twin flame is not communicating with you. It's so easy, especially if you're new to just project on your twin flame, get angry at them and anger is numbing your emotions. So it's like going to keep you stuck in the cycle of essentially like resenting your twin flame, hating your twin flame. And yeah, that's going to make your twin flame journey incredibly difficult. And at first you won't even know what's happening because the ego is so good at being sneaky. But when you have the teaching, when you have the support, it's really easy to catch those things and become aware of them. Like, oh, my twin flame is not talking to me. That means somewhere I'm not communicating with myself. And then you can connect with yourself, see where you haven't been communicating with yourself. Maybe you're not listening to yourself you're not enforcing your boundaries, like those little things. So then you start to recognize that your twin flame gave you a gift with that upset of not communicating with you. But on the other hand, if you didn't have any support or anybody to help point that out for you, you would make the mistake of thinking that your twin flame is just ignoring you. They're being like mean to you or whatever, right? You wouldn't uh, receive the gift fully. So that's why it's so important. Absolutely. Yeah, the more that you actually heal in the space and do really receive the support, I've noticed that having the same upsets with my twin flame and actually healing at the core, they'll say things along the line of like, my intention is not to hurt you. My intention is not to upset you. And they really do desire, like Deb said, to help you release things that no longer serve you. And they start to recognize this too, because you're recognizing within yourself. Like I said, as in the beginning, how you think about your twin flame is how they show up. How you view yourself is how they mirror back to you. Like it's, it's a really simple process, but 
when we come from programming of a soulmate to a twin flame union with soulmate programming will not work in your twin flame union. I've tried it. It does not work. I guarantee. <laughs> it, uh, it, it doesn't work. Like it just does not happen. Um, but it is having to recognize that they're here to show you how to unconditionally love yourself and how to unconditionally love them. And there is a, a deep level of responsibility that you have to take in. And I also see that that, it, that was something I struggled with. That's something I still can struggle with here and there if I'm not fully present with myself and want to blame or project. Uh, but in truth, they're fully responsible of their feelings and you're fully responsible of your feelings. And so if you feel that they're doing something to you, again, they're mirroring to you where you're doing that within yourself. And that's where this community can gently point things out. I was working with one of my, my twin flame buddies last night and I was just like, I'm not seeing this. And then she's like, do you want me to help you here? And I'm like, yeah. And she like pointed it out. I'm like, oh my gosh, because I'm in the middle of it. I just can't see it clearly. And so that is what we're really emphasizing here is that when you allow yourself to be loved by those who are in this work, you really are deeply loved by them because they're able to point things out to you so that you can accelerate in your journey. You can move forward instead of staying in this upset. And I find that people who do leave the twin flame journey is because they just weren't able to work through a really big upset and they just gave up. And that is not something that we recommend. We do not recommend giving up on your twin flame journey or giving up on your twin flame because that is ultimately where you're going to build your ultimate life is with your partner and your twin flame. So it is truly important to allow yourself to see that they are here to help you become the best version of yourself. And the best version of yourself has to let go of things that no longer serve you or no longer in alignment with the life that you're trying to create. Mm -hmm. Perfect. This kind of is um, the fundamental you are creating, the fundamental you are creating already by applying all the basics we are explaining here. Mm -hmm. Because the twin flame journey will help you to create your perfect life with your perfect partner. And so everything that does not serve you in truth, everything that is not supporting you in becoming the best version of yourself, the best, the best life you desire, will feel very uncomfortable the deeper you go in loving yourself. And with this path, you have to build a fundament and the teaching foundation. foundation. Yeah, we, we, we speak kind of like English. <laughs> we have a little bit of a mix, but that's okay. So, exactly. How I improve my English with just doing it again and again and again and again, even I'm making a mistake. I'm not giving up speaking English because I made a mistake or why it's hard for me. I keep going, showing up for myself in improving the language. It's the same on your twin flame journey. Mm -hmm. You don't give up, maybe you made a mistake and you screamed with your twin flame and you projected your upset on your twin flame. We are doomed then because we scream with each other like once a week at least. No, it's not that often, <laughs> but it feels like that. that. <laughs> Don't cover up for the fact that I come from Latin America and I am sassy as fuck and I scream a lot and I'm very passionate. But you're not always screaming. I think no. you underestimate how loving you are already because of the teaching. I could be loving and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> and this is like what Kanisha was saying, giving up is in, no, not an option because you are not giving up on yourself or you are like me. I like, don't it, it, is a, it is, the option is there. We don't recommend it. That would be kind in of. In truth, like, it's not an option because you will It's not a real to. option in truth, but you're, you're I don't welcome think that to you can. I, it. I honestly don't feel like you can give up. Like you're you'll just keep being brought back. Like the signs will just keep doubling and like you'll just feel awful. And so, like, yeah, maybe you're 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 giving up, but you're you just can't like you can't mm. deny the desire that you have for um, you can try. You know, your purpose. Yeah, yeah, you, you can cannot, try. <laughs> you cannot unlearn what you already learned. And yeah. if you have a desire and it's brought you here, you 
the, clearly you are in the search for your twin flame. Otherwise, like, like what would be the purpose of being in a twin flame community? But like, and, and that's something that I wanted to touch upon too. Like some of the, the most wonderful experiences I've had is finding that the more I release the things that I, were not working in my life, and certain like relationships and friendships what like uh, almost everything I knew fell away when I started this this journey and it's a pretty common experience for many of us it's like oh I'm losing friends I'm not talking to this person who I met for 20 years or maybe you're placing boundaries even with your parents and like it can be very challenging but as you release that and you go deeper with like the teachings in the community, you actually receive your true family, you receive your tribe, you receive your true friends, people who actually meet you in unconditional love, provided that this is what you are looking for at the core. Ah, of course. But like that, that's like everything that I desire. Like I, I, I received more love here than 28 years living with my parents. And they, they were loving me to the best of their abilities. But like, wow, the love that, that we all receive here is like, wow. And you can take it one step at a time. Like we, we, most of us have been here for quite some time now. So when you're new, it's just, it's okay. You can take it easy. Oh, we are starting to see comments. Yes. So read the comments. Ketura, hi, beautiful tw uh, twin flame fam. Exactly, that's exactly it. Like it feels like a hi. big family. <laughs> and she's like, oh, having tried to deny my twin flame before I found TFU made me slowly die. I had so much contrast. Now, if I try to quit, I'd probably self-destruct. And this is exactly so what I want. That's very cool sense, thank you. Yeah, I think you put it like perfectly. Yeah, it's basically you would be denying being who you are. And, and I love it that the teaching says, like Chef and Shania were saying in many classes, like, it's like, it's you and your circumstances. Where you are, there you are. You cannot really run away from that. You can pretend, you can, but you know, stuff will follow where you go except for your twin flame, because you're not paying attention to what you need. I don't yeah. think that's something similar that mm -hmm. I hear. Like there are some twin flames that say that, oh, perhaps next lifetime I can be with my twin flame. I can give up for this lifetime. It's something I've seen a lot in the open forum. So I'd like to address that. Uh, it's as Deborah said, like, it's just you and your circumstances and like the circumstances are not gonna go anywhere just because you're reincarnated because uh, life keeps coming in cycles. So if you don't heal something within yourself, you're going to have the same exact pattern come up in the next life and then the next one. So it's not time that brings you your twin flame union. It's actually healing whatever you have in front of you, whether that's being no contact with your twin flame, being in a marriage with a soulmate, like all those things are coming up to be healed. And there's no better time than now to do that. And that applies to every upset you have on your twin flame journey, every block. Like there's no better time than now to deal with it. And then just, you know, you get it over with, you release it, it's gone. You don't have to deal with it anymore. Instead of just uh, prolonging the whole process and letting it drag out, it just doesn't feel very good. And uh, it's not really going to accomplish anything. And it's not very compassionate either. Like as I hear you, it's like not compassionate at all. And... Yeah, because like what we were speaking at the very beginning, we are by, like we are beings, we are souls, so we hold a certain vibration, but when it doesn't get cleared out from that vibration, we like stay with you. It's kind of like your luggage. So if you're carrying like unnecessary luggage, you would like to make a stop at some point in the road and like open that that suitcase and see like what am I carrying here because it starts to feel like not everything that I have here might be necessary anymore and it doesn't like it doesn't matter how impossible circumstances might look like you can still manifest your like your twin flame if it wasn't for this work I would have never found Paco like ever 
ever, ever, or maybe maybe in zillion lifetimes. Because like we are also feeling this pattern of like focusing too much on the outside and how things look like. So if I was going to be looking for my twin flame based on how he was looking, I would have not have found him. Even less so provided the fact that we had an ocean in between. So I would still have met him and not recognize him. But like, oh, okay. Not this, this person I know. Ah, okay, cool. I know someone in Austria. Yeah. And he ended up being my twin flame. So and it was actually that we met in the community. So the, the more you get involved, the, the higher the chances are that you're gonna meet your twin flame. Many of us actually met our twin flames here in the community. Not everyone, but a lot of us. So yeah, and the truth is that every upset that you're having, whether it's with them or with your like family or your kids or whatever upset you're having in your life, it's always an upset with God. Mm -hmm. And so when you direct your relationship and your focus on healing your relationship with God and recognizing that God created everything for you to be able to evolve and to be the best version of yourself, you'll find this journey so much easier because you're only ever having one relationship with God. Absolutely. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I feel we kind of wrong. We're coming up to yes. I feel someone got it to share something. Yeah. Want to share Take now for a whole new piece? Okay. Yeah. So I would like to thank you all for uh, everything you said, and I would like to thank all the people who were watching us today and also for the comments, for the cool comments. And yeah, if you are watching from YouTube, don't forget to give us a thumb up and uh, um, <laughs> subscribe to our channel. And we will see you in the next live. Bye. Bye.